This is TNT Tuesday night teaching, praise God. Amen. As y'all can see, Lady Whitley is not with me tonight. You know, yesterday was her birthday. She parted too much, y'all. She <laughs> parted <laughs> too hard. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, we gave her a break tonight, but she's with us online, praise God. And we thank God for all of you that's joining us. <clears throat> We're going to get ready to jump in. We told you all this month, which is about to end, and the whole month of November, we're going to teach from the topic faith. Right. We're going to teach from the topic faith. So you know where we're going. We're dealing with faith. So you can study ahead. And if I, if God give me the scriptures in time enough, I'll give them to you. You'll know where we're going. But tonight we're going to James 2 and 18. And we're talking about see faith tonight. Yes, Lord. We're talking about sea faith tonight. We're going to take care of some administrative things before we uh, jump in, praise God, into the Word. We're going to have a word of prayer. Then I'm going to give you some notes. And then we're going to receive our offering. And then we're going to just go right into the Word. Is that all right? Amen. Let us have a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we go into your word tonight on this Bible study, we pray now, Father, for these that are under the sound of my voice, those that may be listening by the airways, Father God, that you would corner our conscience now, Father God. Relieve us from the toils of the day, Father God. Give us clarity of mind, clarity of thought, Father God. Let our focus be held with heaven, word, that we may be able to receive tonight from your word, Father God. We pray tonight, Father God, that you would fill us even the more as we learn more of your word, Father God, that we may be able to grow by and produce much fruit. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. The people of God said amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Those of you that are giving tonight, y'all see it online. You know your ways of giving. We're in the house tonight, those of us that's in the house. And we, we're going to give uh, this way tonight. We like doing it online as well. But those of you that are doing it online, we thank God for you. We thank God for those of you that have been with us this weekend, this past weekend, for our pastor appreciation. Glory to God. Yeah, glory. Amen. Man. We thank God for those of you that joined us. Those of you that fellowshiped with us this weekend, we thank you for all the cards, the letters, and definitely the cash yes. that you guys sent to me and Lady Whitley. We appreciate it. Thank God for all of you. We thank God for all your prayers and all of your support. It has been a blessing unto us. Amen. We Man. have been really blessed. And this Sunday will be our closeout. We'll have uh, uh, Elder Tim Williams from uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado. He'll be with us. Uh, breaking the bread of life with us and we ask that you join us again at 11 a.m. and we'll be uh, entering into that closeout service. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. I need your help. We're getting ready to go into November. Some of you have seen it online. We're going to get ready to go into the month of November. It's harvest time. Our church, our church wants to feed 50 plus families. 50 plus families, we want to do it. Now, we know that, now, mark your calendars, November the 9th, that's our, that's our monthly food distribution. We do that on November the 9th. That's our monthly food distribution. But by the 18th of November, I need to have 50 turkeys slash hams in our hands so that we can put these boxes together and issue them out to 50 plus families. Now, I said 50 plus, so that means sky is the limit. But I need y'all's help to help us reach this goal. Amen? Amen. I need turkeys or hams. Glory to God. Those of you that seen the flyer online, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Go online, look at the flyer. Uh, we know all the fixings that go with Thanksgiving dinner and all those things there. If you want to donate some of those things, that's fine. But we need them turkeys and them hams. We need amen. turkeys and them hams, glory to God. Help us meet our goal, amen. We want to bless the community. We want to bless those. Just want to help those with a little assistance during the holiday season, amen. So help us with these turkey and ham donations. We need them. You can drop them off at the church, the, the numbers online and everything. Give us a call. We'll meet you and come get the ham, get the turkey, amen. We want to do this uh, November the 18th. The Thursday before Thanksgiving, we want to have them all, but that Saturday, we want to issue them out. Just make it plain. We won't have them a week before. People got to cook it. You can't give it to them on Thanksgiving Day. Come out here. We want to give it to them a week before. So we're going to get everything that Thursday before Thanksgiving, the week before Thanksgiving, and then that Saturday, we're going to issue them out at our same location, Divine Creations Ministry. They allow us to use their parking lot. And that's where we're going to issue them out from. And we'll have a time set. And we're saying 50 plus. 
So that means we're going to have all the fixes in a box set up for it, and it's until we run out. Glory to God. Glory. Amen. So we want you to do that. Sometime in November, we'll be having a new members class. But this class is for old members as well as the new members. I'm going to teach uh, the house I'm gonna, from Ezekiel. Show the house to the house. I'm going to teach from Ezekiel, show the house to the house, so that people will learn how, the order of this house. We've had several new members join the church this year, as well as the ending of last year, and we want everybody, we're going to do it, uh, they're thinking about doing it via Zoom, or we're going to do it like we're doing it now, but we want those of you that are online, some of you have already received your new members' books. Those that are in the house, they'll receive theirs on that day, but we want to show the house to the house. We're going to come from Ezekiel sometime in November. The reason why I can't give you a date, it was supposed to be when we're going to issue the turkeys out. But since the turkeys have taken that date, we've had to move it. Amen? So we'll get back with you on a date for that. Amen? I think that's all of the notes that we have. Please join us this Sunday for our closeout from our uh, pastor appreciation. I'm talking about, I'm loving it. I thank God uh, for all of you that have allowed me to be your pastor. I don't take it lightly. It's an assignment. You either sent or you just went. That's right. That's right. I'm going to tell you, you don't want to just went in this. This is not for the, for the light of hearted. But you know, I thank God that I get the opportunity to do the work of the Lord. I don't have to do this. I get to do it. It's a privilege. God has given me the honor and the privilege of doing it. And I don't take it like that. Thank God for it. Amen. Amen. Let's get into our scripture. Where did I tell you we're going tonight? James 2 and 18. James 2 and 18. You know me now. I like to read it in the Amplified. Of course, I have a King James Bible in front of me. But I like to read it in the Amplified because I like it turned up a little bit. I'm, I may even read it in both. Let's. Let's do it that way. I'm only reading one scripture in your hearing. I want you, this is Bible study, so we turn pages here. You don't have no Bible, you need to get a Bible because we're going to be turning some pages. I got it on my phone. Okay, that's good. You got it on your phone. <laughs> Still, go to the next page. James 2 and 18. Now, this is what it says in the King James. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. This is what the Amplified said. I love, I love the Amplified. But some may say, you claim to have faith. And I have good works. Show me your alleged faith without the works, if you can. And I will show you my faith by my works. That is what I do. I want you to get this tonight. Faith has to be evident. Oh man, this is good job. Faith has to be evident. We're talking about faith and we're going to be we're, we're going to teach you during this series the levels of faith. Because the Bible says that, that, that the Lord dealt all of us a measure of faith. I'm going to teach you during this series the levels of faith because a measure means that you got faith, you got faith, you got faith, but we all don't have the same level of faith. And I'm going to show you that during this series when we, as we talk about faith. But tonight we want to talk about see faith. S-E-E. See faith. You know they say people from Missouri, you know what they say. We the show me faith. Show me. You know. The disciples said, they said it like this to, G, to, uh, to Jesus. They, the disciples told Jesus, show us the Father. That's what they said to Jesus. And Jesus replied back to the disciples. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Mm -hmm. They said, show us the Father. We want to see, the, we want to see who you're talking about. Show us the Father. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. They wanted to see the Father. They wanted to see who he was talking about. They wanted to see. Now, this is what they did see. They saw the evidence of the Father. Uh -huh. oh, man, I'm going to show you tonight. You know the, you know the biblical uh, definition of faith? Let's just go there first. I'm going to get that little head of my notes. Hebrews 11. Let's go there. It's Bible study now. We're going to go back to James 2 and 18. But let's go. Just bag up. you right there. Just bag up from... <coughs> From James, and you be right there in Hebrews, glory to God. 
Hebrews 11 and 1, that's the biblical definition of faith. Did you know that? See, a lot of people don't know. What's the definition of faith? Faith, now faith. You see it. I'm, I'm in your Bible, am I? <laughs> Glory mm -hmm. to God. I'm giving your Bible to Don. This is Bible study. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Remember when I told you the disciples asked, asked Jesus, show us the Father. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. But not only did you see the Father, you see the evidence, because Jesus manifested the Father. God, buddy. <laughs> see, the very thing that they were hoping for, when the man was sitting on the, uh, was sitting on the side of the road and he was blind, and he said, Jesus, yeah. Jesus, hear me. Jesus said, what, what do you want? He wanted his sight back. Jesus touched him, and, it, and he saw again. He saw the evidence. Come on, come on, man. He saw the evidence. I'm telling you, we're talking tonight about see faith. See faith. The evidence. We need evidence. In the same way, faith by itself is not, is not accompanied by an action. If faith by itself is, is alone, it's over here by itself. Because you know people when they join the church or when they give their life to Christ, they say, I have faith. Mark the 11th chapter says, have faith in God. And many people say, I have faith. Yeah. But if faith is over here by itself with no action, faith alone, according to the Bible, this ain't me now, mm -hmm. faith alone by itself is dead. Faith has to be, it's almost like when you make a cake there is a, there's certain ingredients that have to go into that cake to make that cake respond the way a cake's supposed to respond. True. Because if you put that cake in the oven without certain ingredients in it, that cake won't respond the way it's supposed to respond. That's right. As it is with faith. If you just saying, I got faith, but without any actions, that faith won't respond. When it needs to rip. Oh, this is going to get good. Right now. Now. This is going to get good now. Oh, I got faith. God, the Lord said, you got it. Well, then show me. Show it to me. In other words, show me what you're working with. <laughs> See, a lot of people say they have faith, but faith by itself, faith, faith has to be accompanied by an action. And we teach here in this house, we teach that faith does three things. Faith has to do these three things. Faith speaks. Don't you know faith speaks? Faith speaks. The next thing that faith does, faith gives. Faith has to give something. And the third thing faith does, faith does something. That's the action. I don't want to go back to I don't want to go back to school on you. You know, when we was in school, they told us to make a sentence. You know, if you wrote out a sentence, that sentence had to have certain ingredients in it. It had to have a noun. Adjective. Come on, come on, somebody. You've been in school. Yeah, yeah. Come on, now. We ain't forgot it. I don't know if they teaching it now, but that's how they taught us. If you wrote a sentence, that, that ain't no sentence. No, that's how I talk. That may be how you talk, but that ain't no sentence. That mm -hmm. sentence got to have a noun. It's got to have a, a, a verb. Word. Huh? What? Yeah, because some people <laughs> some people just be talking. But they taught us that. So as it is with faith, faith has to have an action so that it shows that it is actually faith. And I often tell people, now we told you the three things that faith does. Faith speaks. Yeah. Faith will say something. See, say, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> when I took you to Hebrews, the 11th chapter, it says, now faith. Our mantra for this year, uh, God's urgency of now. Meaning right now. The Bible says, now faith. Mm -hmm. Talking about right now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith does three things. Faith speaks, faith gives, and faith does something. A faith that's never been tried or tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. Faith that's never been tried or tested, and I'm going to show you tonight, and all of us, all of us that claim that we have faith. I'm talking about just because you're a pastor, just because you're the bishop, just because you're the elder, just because you're the deep, just because you this or that. A title don't mean nothing. A person that says they have faith, their faith will be tested. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Your faith will be tested. Why? So that you will know that your faith has what it needs in the time that it's going to need. And I'm going to tell you, who's going to test my faith? Who gonna, God's going to test your faith. God's going to test your faith. Our faith that we claim we have will always be tested to do what? To prove its vitality. To prove its vitality. When I was studying this, I was like, why would, why would the word vitality jump in? If you look at the definition of vitality, it's the ability to be strong and active. It's energy. Faith without works is dead. But when you add the works to the faith, the faith has ability, it is strong, it is active, and it has energy. Jesus wants to see our faith. It ain't enough talking about I got it. And you, do you know when you exercise your faith, not only does it prove its vitality it, to you, and to the Father, but it also proves it to others that are watching you. Mm -hmm. Other people watching you. Reason why it proves something to them, remember I told you, all of us got it. You got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. But all of us don't have the same level. Your faith can increase somebody else's level. My God. Mm -hmm. They see what you, my God, he did that. Don't you know, instead of the brothers in the boat, remember when Peter and uh, the disciples was in the boat, Jesus was walking on the water? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Listen, my God. You know, the other disciples said, Peter, Peter, sit down. That's Jesus. Now, you know you can't do that. Peter said, if you bid me to come, I can't. Mm -hmm. Peter's faith became evident. Yes. Mm -hmm. he, Peter had what I'm talking about tonight. See faith. See faith. Uh -huh. The rest of them now, all the other 11 said they had faith too. But they, sit down. We ain't getting on that water. We ain't got that kind of faith, Peter. Right. Sit down. Mm -hmm. Peter said, bid me to come. I come. And what did Jesus tell him? Come. And Peter stepped out on the water with Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. Peter had sea faith, but the disciples that was in the boat with, with Peter, they had faith too. They just didn't have no sea faith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I go fishing with a friend of mine. He got a boat. He got a boat. He told, I thank God for those of you that have boats. Thank God for y'all. I don't have to buy one. I'm going to just go fishing with y'all. <laughs> Every time I get on his boat, he said, LT, make sure you got your C name. S E A. I said, what you mean? I'm good. I got that vest on. I fall off here. I'm on your phone flow. He said, no. Do, do you know what C legs are? When you when you're out on the water, sometimes your equilibrium gets off. The boat can be sitting still, but you'll feel like it's moving. Yeah, yeah. You're like, my God. He said, no, you gotta get your C legs. Once you get your sea legs under you, then the boat swaying from side to side won't affect you. It won't bother you. Once you have sea faith, things that come up in your life won't affect you. They won't bother you because you got sea faith. I got the faith like Peter. I'll step out if God tells me to. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I guess I got sea faith. When you get your sea faith, just like your sea legs under you, you'll step out and do things by faith. You don't have to see it to believe it. That's what faith is. I don't have to see it. If he said it, what do you mean did he, if he said it? If it's in his word and he said it, I believe it. And I'll step out on faith. See, that's the reason why people, you don't need people to tell you what you can do and what you can't do. What you need to tell you what you can do and what you can't do is the word of God. If the word tells me that I can, the Bible says what is impossible with man is possible with God. If you got sea faith and you believe God, you'll do what's impossible for man, but what's possible with God. You'll be able to do it. I say, how do you do that? That's why some people underestimate you. They underestimate you, but they cannot underestimate the God you serve. Why? Because the Bible says, greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. Greater is he. So that's what faith is. When we, when we step out on our faith, we show faith's vitality in our lives. We show faith's vitality, faith's ability, faith's strength. We show it that it's active and that it's strong in us. Our faith has to be exercised in order to be seen by others. 
That's, that's, that's what faith is. People that say they have faith, you're a believer. You, you're, you're a faith. You're a brother of faith. You're a sister of faith. Well, when do you exercise your faith? Because right, mm -hmm. many times as believers, we buy into what's going on in, in the world. But is your faith in what's going on in the world or what's going on in the kingdom? See, people of faith have to believe kingdom over world. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why as, as we grow in grace, we're growing to the kingdom. We're in, the Bible says you're in this world, but you're not of it. But many of us, we have more faith in what they say on television, what we hear on the news, what somebody said. People will believe gossip faster than they'll oh, believe yes, the truth. Yes, 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 yes. They said that, they said, now this is what somebody said. They said that by the time, a lie will be around the world by the time the truth get up and put the shoes on. <laughs> a lie gone around the world. Why? Because people will buy into it. People believe that right there. That's what people have their faith in. Somebody told me, it was on the internet. I said, my God. That makes it true? Because you've seen it on the internet? <laughs> I said, I guess they don't lie on there, dude. <laughs> Glory to God. Our faith has to be exercised. What does it mean? Our faith has to be flexed. Our faith has to be strong. We have to, we have to exercise. We have to, we have to show our faith by doing, speaking, and giving. We got to do something to show that I got faith. You can't say that. And, and, and we teach here, the first level of your spiritual maturity is your ability to hear from God. So if you know that you have the ability to hear from God, and God tells you to do something, he's going to tell you to do it without you seeing it. <laughs> he ain't going to tell you to do it. It wouldn't be faith if he told you, go open the door. Because you know you got the ability to do that. But if he told you to do something that you could not see, that's when it becomes faith. Now what happens, the ball is in your court. Now, am I going to do what God told me to do? Because mm -hmm. now, I don't see what he told me to do. God said, start your own business. He said, that's been in your heart. I know it's been in your heart. I'm with you. Go ahead and start it. Now, you heming and humming. You're, you're debating. You're going back and forth with God about it. But you say you have faith. God said, go back to school. Get your degree. You say you've been wanting to do that. But now you now you putting up every obstacle. Well, I would if, if I I work eight hours a day. I would you got every obstacle to keep you from what you say you have faith in. I tell people all the time, you know, that's in debt. And including myself, because I talk to myself. That's in debt. You want to get out of debt, the only one that can get you out of debt is you. Right. <laughs> the only one that gets you out of debt. And many people don't have enough faith in themselves. To get themselves out of what they got themselves in. Mm -hmm. God said, if you would trust me, I will show you your faith. Oh, yeah. God will never take us a place that our faith will not sustain us. Uh -huh. You better hear me now. God will never take you to a place that your faith cannot sustain you. If he did that, then he would not be a righteous God. Why would God take you to a place knowing that your faith won't, handle, won't be able to sustain you out there? God would never hang you off a cliff and tell you, I hope you make it. Yeah. He's not that type of God. So if God said it, people say this often, if God said it, I believe it. Whether you believe it or not, <laughs> it's still true. If God said it, you don't have to believe it, but it's still true. God, our faith, God would never take us to a place that our faith will not sustain us. Mm -hmm. God would never take you somewhere and have you out there. If you follow in him, now, what we can't do is call something faith that's not. Right, right. Amen. Oh, I've seen people do it all the time. I've seen people do it. We had a preacher one time, and I thank God that he was honest enough, not only with God, but with himself and even with the congregation. We went to his church one time, and he had gotten married. But by the time we got there, he had gotten separated or divorced. Mm -hmm. But you know what he told us and told the church? That was me and not God. See, that's honesty. Yeah, that's that's, that's mm -hmm. honesty. He said, that was me and not God. So you can't call something faith and think that God is going to co-sign oh, yeah. what right. you're doing. All right, now. I'm, stepping out on, I'm stepping out on faith. Yeah, but did God tell you to step out there? Mm -hmm. See, God called Peter out of the boat. Peter didn't just jump out that boat. And Peter had enough sense to say, if you bid me to come, I ain't listening to them. 
<laughs> no, it was some up, wasn't it? Sit down, Peter, that's Jesus. No, he said, but if you tell me to come, then I'll come. So you can't just step out and then when things don't work out. Well, I thought that's what God wanted me to do. The first level of your spiritual maturity is your ability to hear from God. How do I hear from God? Open that book. And that's and he talking. Mm -hmm. Tonight, if you're listening to this word, he's talking. Right here in James 2 and 18, God is talking. Let's go back to James 2 and 18. What did he say? He said, a man, he say, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me your faith. Good God Almighty. That's Missouri, ain't it? Yeah. Show yeah. me yeah. thy faith. Without works. And I'll show you my faith by my works. In other words, what is he saying? That's the reason why I read it to you in the Amplified. I'm going to show you my faith by what I do. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to just tell you I got it. I'm going to show you my faith. Right. You know, many times me and mother was talking tonight before before y'all showed up here at Bible study. You know, it's just traditional. Traditional. More people come to Sunday service than they come to Bible study. Yeah. It's just traditional. More yes. people, more people show up on Sunday than they do on Tuesday night, on the teacher night, on the night when you're supposed to get fed. Now Sunday, oh, I'm not supposed to get fed. Y'all, no, you get fed on Sunday, but what we do on Tuesdays or whenever your Bible study night is, we dig in deep, yes. like we're doing tonight, dealing with faith. And many people, they they're on Sunday, but they miss the night when you really get fed. When you really get to break, when you really get to write down some questions and really get to answer some questions and, and, and really go into the word in depth, something you can't do on Sunday. That's right. I want to go back to the way we used to have Bible study when I was coming up. I know we do a lot of things online and different things now, but we used to be in Bible study conversing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What about this? Yes. Because they gave you the lesson. You went home, you studied, I went on, we came back, and then yeah. we got in Bible study. Yeah, I studied it, and he when he said, bid me to come, what was he talking about? Yeah. We, yeah. we went back and forth yeah. right, so that we could dig deeper into that thing, so that everybody could come away with an understanding. All right. All right. People got to have enough faith to trust God. If I can make it on Sunday, I can make it on Tuesday. I can make it on Wednesday. Why? It's not faith in the pastor. It's not faith in the church. It's not faith in the people. My faith is in God. Yeah. That's where your faith got to be. So he says, hey, I'll show you my faith by what I do. And it ain't just showing man by what you do. God watch. You said you trust me. Let me see if you trust me. I'm the one who told you to do that. When are you going to do it? And God is waiting for many of us to act. I told you, faith's vitality is its ability to be strong, active, and show its energy. God said, I'm waiting on you to show me something. You say you got it. When are you going to show it to me? Show me what you're working with. See, faith is the faith that is evident. It's the faith. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews 11, it says faith is a substance. Don't you know what a substance is? This substance in this room right now, I want you to know. It's molecules and particles in this room right now that we can't see. It's substance in this room right now. Uh, you, you know, we're talking about being in the in this COVID era. That's the reason why they want you to wear a mask. Because there's particles and molecules that come out of our mouth many times. We don't see them visibly. Oh, come on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We don't see it visibly, but they come, they're out there. They're in the air. That's how people yeah. get the flu. That's how people get sick. If you got it, stay at home. We don't want none of your we don't want none of your evidence. We don't want none of your substance to become evident. Now I got to go to the doctor. Glory to God. No, but this is real. Hebrews 11 1 says, faith, now faith is the substance. What substance? I can't see the substance. I can't, I can't feel the substance. Mm -hmm. You know, you can feel the wind, but you can't see it. That's right. You feel it? So you know that wind is out there. But it ain't like you could. Grab the wind. Mm -hmm. It ain't like you can stop the wind, hold the wind. You can get behind the building, but that wind's still there. That's right. When you come out, if that wind's still blowing, you're still going to feel it. As it is with faith. Faith is a substance. It becomes evident when we activate it. We got to activate it. When you bake that cake, if you, don't put, if you don't put the right thing in that cake, you put that cake in that oven, you can stand there all night long. That cake ain't rising. Right. That cake ain't why it ain't came up. You put everything in it? Yeah, but I left this out. <laughs> that? Yeah, but it wasn't nothing but a little bit. Don't you know that's all it takes? 
I'm finna help y'all tonight. Do y'all know y'all know that yeast that they be putting in bread? Mm -hmm. It don't take you ain't got don't dump a whole bunch in there now. You can blow the whole up in there. Yeah. But don't you know it only take a little bit of that yeast? Mm -hmm. All you gotta do is put a little bit in it. That's how faith is. The Bible tells us if you had just the mustard seed yeah. size of faith. And that's the Bible said that's all you need. Mm -hmm. Why? Because faith is powerful. Yes, it is. When you activate it, faith is powerful. Just like that yeast, when you put it in that bread, is powerful. If you just got a mustard seed side of faith. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's all you need. Tell me, oh, I wish I had faith like it. I wish I had faith like Peter and got out of that book. God said, all you need is a mustard seed size. And you activate that. Jesus wants to see our faith, y'all. Yes. He wants to. Pastor, where are you getting this from? Jesus wants to see our faith. He wants to see it. Yes. Let's go to Mark, the second chapter. This Bible study, this is good. This is good. All I need is a mustard seed. And look, I ain't, I ain't comparing my faith to your faith. You, you might have faith to do some things I, I can't do. But I, I got to work with what God gave me. Faith is like playing spades. I think I told y'all. Oh, yeah. Remember I told y'all? Now, I don't know how you play now. We, got, we change the rules sometimes. We get down to the table. But look, you deal them cards out. I think it's about 13. We all get 13 cards apiece. But here it is. When you're playing spades, all of us have a hand. Yeah. And for that hand to be legal. God my woo, For that hand to be legal, everybody, all four of us, got to have 13 cards. I'm talking about spades, and I know some of y'all say y'all don't know about spades. It, it's a little over your head. You're okay. Look it up online, spades. For that hand to be legal, we all got to have the same amount of cards in our hand. That, it's not a legal hand unless we do. When the Bible says Christ has, that God has dealt every man the measure of faith. Now, for it to be legal with him, you don't have to have the same amount of faith, but you all got some. Yeah. Come on. He said, I know you got he said, I know you got some because the Bible says he dealt every man yes, a measure. Yes. A measure. Yeah. He said he gave everybody a measure now. And see, just like in spades, when we play a card, I ain't drunk tight. I ain't got all the spades in my hand. My God. Matter of fact, I only got two. <laughs> what I'm gonna do? And I don't care. You got a joker and you got an ace. I did, but I figured these two, they're going to make a book. Both of them mm -hmm. should do something. But it's only two of them. So what I got to do with the rest of the cards in my hand? I got to work my faith. Yes. I got to make the rest of them cards do something too. Well, as it is with our faith. I may not have what somebody else got, but I got to work with what God gave me. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's what we all have to do. Why? Because God won't see it. He said, I know I dealt it to you. Mm -hmm. I dealt to everybody something. Now show me what I dealt. And this is where, where I tell you, Mark 2. Mark 2. Well, I guess I'll get there too. Oh, yeah. Mark 2. And go to. Ah, let's go to verse 4. I, I don't know if we want to start there. The, the whole story, let me let's bring you up to. At speed and that made that help. This man is, is, is sick. And this is what his friends want to do. His friends, I told y'all on Sunday, I don't know if, how many of y'all heard me. The church is the hospital. Yes. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. The church is the hospital. Mm -hmm. Now, ain't nobody should be up in here talking about, well, I'm all well. Well, if you are well, you don't need the hospital. you good to go. You're on your way to heaven. But for the rest of us, we need the hospital. Yeah. Because there's yeah. something wrong with us, and we need, not that there's something bad, but it may be something that God needs to correct within us. Mm -hmm. This man here in Mark, the second chapter, <clears throat> he he's sick. Yeah. The Bible says he has palsy. He's he laying on a bed. He yeah. can't walk. But his friends, y'all, they wanted to get him to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Y'all yeah. read it in your own time, Mark, the second chapter. They wanted to get him to the great physician. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what they did, let's start at verse 4. I can't read the whole thing to you. What they did, it says, and when they had come near the place, it was such a press that they could not get to where the physician, Jesus, was. So they took the man up on the roof. Now, this man is on a bed, y'all. Mm -hmm. They carried him up on the roof, 
And when they had broke it up, they broke the roof up, y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now they singing in the song, turn the roof off. Now that, I don't know <laughs> where they got that from. But they took the roof off and they let the man's bed down. They let him down mm-hmm. in the place where Jesus was. And the Bible says, I don't know if I'm in your Bible, but if you look at verse 5, it says, and when Jesus saw, what did he see? Everybody. He saw that dog on faith. My God, I didn't. I thought you said it was a substance. Uh-huh. Oh, but it became evident. Yeah. It became evident. Uh-huh. Oh, it was a substance probably when they were on the way. But when they got there, their faith became evident. They said, we can't get, you know how many people would have left when they couldn't get in there? Oh, yeah. We already carried this, man. We didn't carry them all the way from the house down here. And now we didn't get here and we can't get inside. Many of us, because we run into obstacles in life, we let our faith stop right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They said no. <laughs> Glory to God. A lot of people quit when they say no. I ain't, I ain't a quitter when they say no. Mm-hmm. I, I'm telling you I don't quit. I tell the story about when I went, I had a house, wanted to buy another house. The lady told me, get rid of that house, you can buy that. I said, but the Lord told me I could have both of them. Mm-mm. She told me, mm-mm. And then told me why I couldn't. I said, oh. And my faith dropped because I started to believe what she was saying mm-hmm. instead of what I mm-hmm. know God had told me. Mm-hmm. What you need two houses for? This? <laughs> she said, what you need two houses for? <laughs> <laughs> I said, because God told me I can have two. Mm-hmm. But when she told me why I couldn't, when I ran into that obstacle, I didn't let my faith Stop there. I said, I just believe I can. It wasn't a few minutes later. Her boss walked in. Oh, he can get both of them. Woo! Well, my faith, well, you know what my faith went in? Woo! Yeah. Hey, ma'am, be, listen to him. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her again. Maybe she didn't hear you the first time. Why? Because we run into obstacles. These men here, they ran into an obstacle. Because if you read it in the Bible, it says when they got to the place where Jesus was, when they came near to the place, they didn't get all the way to where Jesus was. Ain't like they got to the door. It says the press. That means they could have been way back in the crowd somewhere mm-hmm. with this man on this, on this gurney trying to get him to Jesus, the great physician. They had faith. What was their faith, y'all? Their faith was if we could get him to Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Mm-hmm. If we could get him to Jesus. We know that Jesus would be able to heal him. And what they did because they ran into that obstacle, they didn't stop. Mm-hmm. They said, we got to come up with something else. Somebody said, get a ladder, try to take him up that way. Man, could you, that man laying on that thing now, I know you, don't y'all drop me. <laughs> my leg was broke, that's how I was telling me, well, be careful, my, my foot now, don't drop me now. They took him on top of the house where Jesus was, and they tore the roof open and lowered this man down yes. to where Jesus was mm. preaching and teaching it. And the Bible says in verse 6, in verse 5, if you will, but when Jesus saw their faith, yes. he said unto the sick man, look what he says to the sick man. Let me back up. Whose faith did he see? Let's start there. He saw the, the man's friend. He saw the friend's faith. Yeah. Jesus mm-hmm. saw his friend's faith. Now, I told you earlier, somebody is looking at you. Somebody is looking at your faith, and that's going to increase their faith. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Jesus looks up. He didn't see the man laying on the gurney's faith. He saw his friend's faith. And he says to the man on the gurney, son, my God, thy sins have been forgiven thee. Yes. yes. Somebody stole me one time. And when I, when I study scripture, I'd be like, well, why, why did, Jesus, did Jesus heal him? <laughs> see, 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 when Jesus tells you your sins have been forgiven he, he makes you complete. Yeah. He makes you whole. Yeah. So when I asked the scripture, I said, oh, he just said your sins have been forgiven. But did he heal him? Don't you remember the man that uh, there was two thieves on the cross when Jesus yeah. was mm-hmm. up? Right. When they had Jesus up there. It was Jesus, a thief on each side. Now, one thief didn't have faith. Good God. Right. Yeah. Glory to God. One thief didn't have faith. You know what his faith was in? Man, we up here. We, we robbed the place. They get ready to execute us. We getting what we got. Yeah, the other thief saying. had faith. Hey. <laughs> he said, yeah, we might have did what we did, but this man, he said, remember me yep. when you get into your kingdom. Yes. Yes. Jesus says to him, 
Not, yes. not to him, yeah. but to him. You'll be with me today. His name is yeah. yeah. paradise. Yeah. You, you know his faith. His faith on the cross took him to paradise. Yes, <laughs> oh, man, this is good. His faith took him to paradise. This man's friend's faith not only healed the man, but his sins were forgiven. Amen. Oh. So this is what I'm telling you tonight. God wants to see your faith. Do you have sea faith? <laughs> Do you have sea faith? See, this is what we got to have. This is what God is looking for. The Amplified says in verse 5, Mark 2 and 5, this is what the Amplified said. When Jesus saw their active faith springing from, from confidence in him, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Yes. Listen what the Amplified said. When Jesus saw their active faith, See, they could have stayed at the house. This is what I tell people all the time. They could have been at the house. Well, we're going to pray that the Lord will heal you. You know, we know that he's able. God can come here and touch you. And God can't. Would their faith been any less active if it had been at the house? Yeah, because this is what faith does. I told you three things. Faith speaks. And when you pray, what you're doing, you're speaking. With God of life. We could have prayed for him. But I tell people all the time, whatever you pray for, when you get up from praying, start moving in the direction of what you just prayed for. All right, all right. That's active faith. Mm -hmm. Don't get up from praying and saying, I want to come out of debt and get up from praying and go waste some money. Mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't get up from praying and saying, I need to be healed in this area of my life. And then you get up from praying and go back to the area that you say you need to be healed or delivered from. You got to move in the direction of what you just prayed for. Faith says something, then faith does something. What these brothers' faith did in Mark, the uh, second chapter, their faith not only spoke, but their faith done something. And not only that, their faith did the third thing that we told you. Faith speaks, faith does, faith gives. They gave themselves. They gave themselves. Them brothers say, no, we got, we got to give ourselves. God wants your time, your talent, and your treasure. And they gave themselves. They said, no, we, we got you, brother. And it must have took something. I don't know if they got some more people. Y'all help us get him up here. God. That's what faith do, man. I got enough faith to believe that we're going to feed over 50 plus Amen. families. I got enough faith to believe it. I got enough faith to believe it. Ain't seen one turkey. Ain't seen one ham yet. But I got enough faith to believe we're going to do it. I got enough faith to believe we're going to do it. I can't wait to. Now we've seen 48, 49. Woo! I believe we're going to do it. Yeah, you got 49 right there. Now all of a sudden you get faith. No, God wants to see your faith. And I'm challenging myself because when me and Pastor Glenn I talked about uh, collaborating on doing this, we were talking about each church. Your, if your church could do 25, our church could do 25. But God told me, challenge yourself. Do 50 yes. plus. Yes. My God. Why? Because he's saying it's not on you, it's on me. Right. God said, I got to bring the faith. But now that I've prayed and asked God to do it, look, when I got up this morning, I text some friends. Of God, yeah. <laughs> My faith has to get active now. Mm -hmm. Now I text some friends I know. Hey, I need 50 turkeys. <laughs> Good God. Yeah. But they said, now wait a minute now. I need one. You said 50. <laughs> but I have enough faith to ask. Yes. You don't know what the man would have told me. Okay, I, I'll bring you 50. Yeah. But if I never asked, if I never put my faith out there, these brothers would have never found out what God was able to do if their faith would never have been active. Their faith was active. Their faith was in action. And it showed that they had confidence, not in themselves, but confidence in God. They showed they got confidence. The Bible said Jesus looked up and saw their faith. He saw it. So we know that faith can be evidence yes. if we would just activate it. Faith has to speak, faith has to give, and faith has to do something. It does not qualify as faith if you're just sitting at home talking about, I got it. You have to speak it, you have to give, and you have to do God is looking for those that got to see faith. Yes. He's yes. looking for them. He, they, I, want to, I want to see your faith. Yes. Show me what you're working with. I already gave you the biblical definition of faith that's found right here in Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is. What is faith? It's a substance of things that you hope for. 
and the evidence of things not seen. I have not seen one turkey. They had not even seen Jesus. The Bible said they couldn't even get in because of the press. So they didn't even know. But when they got up there, substance becomes evidence when we show our faith for the things that we have not seen. Hear me now. Substance. These particles, molecules, in fact, they become evident when we show our faith for the things that we have not yet seen. My God. Woo. Glory to God. I've been telling Lady Whitley, <clears throat> and even though we've traveled a little bit, you know, breaking up now that uh, this season of COVID that we're in, we didn't, we didn't flew and we didn't went here and we didn't went there. Uh, but I, I told my wife that we're going to get back on our vacation schedule. We have a vacation schedule. We put everything on hold because we want to use wisdom. But at the same time, too, that we're using wisdom, our faith has to be in God. Our faith has to be in God. Well, why you get the shot then? You got faith in God because my faith is acting. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't just sitting talking about I got faith. I got the shot because I spoke it and I believe it, and now I'm putting it in action. Glory to God. Many people have faith, meaning they... They can see things, they faith, when they see things, then their faith becomes evident. You know, many people say, I got faith, but it ain't until they see it that it becomes evident. That's see faith. <laughs> that ain't faith. God wants to see your faith. And the way he sees our faith is when we step out on things that we don't see. See, Peter, Peter knew that water normally if you step in it, your feet don't go through it. It's water. Uh -huh. Peter, but what Peter didn't see was that when you step out on faith in God, that even though you're stepping on water, God can sustain you. Yeah. See, that's what Peter couldn't see. He couldn't see that God was able to sustain him. See, faith is acting upon what you don't see in hope that God will manifest it evident in your life. Mm. I'm stepping out on faith. I'm going back to school, God. I'm believing that you're going to help me get through it. He said, yeah, but you got to be active in me helping you get through it. Yeah. You can't sit back and think, I'm going to do give you all the answers. <laughs> Lord, give me the answers. What's this? <laughs> no, you're going to have to do some work. Your faith is going to have to become active. And I want to give you some examples tonight of sea faith. Of sea faith. If you go to Genesis 22, beginning of the Bible, Genesis, the 22nd chapter, God tells Abraham to go sacrifice, or Abram, if you would, to go sacrifice his only son, Isaac. Yeah. This is sea faith right here. Mm -hmm. Abraham didn't go wake Sarah up. Hey, God said, take this boy up there and sacrifice. He said God wanted to see Abram's faith, not Sarah. And many times when God tells you to do something, and we're talking about his faith, we go check with somebody else. Abram, Abram didn't go check with Sarah. You read it. 22nd chapter of Genesis. God tells Abram to go sacrifice his only son, Isaac. Yes, he did. If you go to verse 12, God starts to speak. When Abraham takes the boy up there, gets ready to sacrifice, in verse 22, I mean in chapter 22, verse 12, if you would, it says, and he said, this is the Lord speaking. Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do anything unto him. For now I know. Oh my God, God mm. talking to him. In other words, for now I see that you fear God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. Yes. This mm -hmm. is the type of faith that God is looking for in people that say that they belong to him. That now, if Abraham, if he, <coughs> excuse me, if he tested Abraham with his only son, what you think he want to test us with? Your children too. Mm -hmm. He want to test you with your money too. He want to see what you, what are you faithful enough to not withhold from him? This is what he told Abraham. He says, "I see now that you have not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me." Many times people say they got faith in God, mm -hmm. but when it comes to my money. This is my money. This is my money. When it comes to my children, these are my children. And what I had to learn, you know, this is my house. This is my wife. This is my husband. I had to learn 
as I grew in my faith, that you got to do a transfer of authority. Mm -hmm. You got to do a transfer of authority. Now, God has given you the ability to be a steward over all of those things. The house, the car, the mm -hmm. children, the money, everything. He said, you're a steward over it. But until you learn to transfer authority, you got to have enough faith that everything that God has given you, just like he gave, he gave Isaac to Abraham, you better wake up. Mm -hmm. He didn't get that son by himself. God gave it to him. But what God wanted him to do was transfer authority. Give back to me what I gave you. Right. Have enough faith in me to believe me for what I gave you. Mm -hmm. And God don't want us just to do it with those material things that we have in life. God wants to flip the script and say, when are you going to give me you? Mm. God said, when you going to have enough faith to turn around and give yourself back to me? I've been laying there. You've been out there doing you. When are you going to give you back to me? Yes, yes. See, just like he did with Abraham, he told Abraham, he says, I see now that you fear God. And that fear there is not the fear that I'm afraid. That fear there, when you look it up in the Hebrew, that you reverence me, mm -hmm. that you obey me. I told him here at our church, you know that the anointing is in the instructions. The blessing is in your obedience. Yes. See, he was really, he showed he was really anointed. Why? Because he did what God told him to do. All right, that's right. He showed God his faith. God said, I'm going to show you. I see now that you have not withheld him from me. And then what God told him. Now look over there. That was a sacrifice right there. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. And, he, and Abraham called the name of the place where he was. And this is where we get Jehovah John. Jehovah Jireh. God will supply all yeah. of my needs. I don't have to act like I got to be over my money. I can trust God with it. He's the one who gave it to me. And if God gave it to me, he's the one. He's the Jehovah Jireh that will make sure I get some more. God is the God that gave me my children. So when I can't touch them, when I can't be where they're at, God is Jehovah Jireh. I got to have enough faith to believe that he'll sustain me. Yes. He'll take care of me. Glory to God. And now because I got enough faith to give myself back to him, I got to believe and receive that he'll take care of me too. Yes. I got to believe it by faith that he'll do it. Let's go back to Mark 5. <clears throat> I'm showing you now some examples of see faith. We know Abraham, he showed his faith. He took that boy up there, didn't he? Yeah, he, did. he took that boy up there. And look, I want to show you something too back in Genesis. Isaac, Isaac wasn't no little baby. Isaac was a big boy. Mm -hmm. Isaac asked him, Dad. Where the sacrifice sacrifice. We get ready to go up here. Where's the sacrifice? And Abraham had enough faith. This is when you say what God says. God had already told him what to do. He told his son, God will provide. Good God buddy. He he thought he was gonna go up here and kill his boy. And he was. He Look, and I'm gonna show you something. Isaac had to have some faith too. Mm -hmm. Abraham was an old man. I'm trying to help I'm trying to help y'all tonight. I looked at this scripture. Abraham was an old man. Oh, man. He let his daddy tie, tie him up. Mm -hmm. You know that boy? It don't say nothing in the scripture about it. He was wrestling and he right. had to fight him and he held him down. He let his daddy tie him up. Why? Because he had enough faith in his father. Oh, yeah. God almighty, yeah. man. He had enough faith in his father that if my father's tying me up, he got a purpose, he got a reason. And whatever I'm going through in life, I got even though it looked like it might be tying me up, it might be taking me through some changes, I got to have enough faith in my father to know that any time he can break these chains. Yeah. At any time he can break these chains. Let me give you another one. Mark 5. Y'all remember the lady with the issue of blood? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to show you how much faith she had. When you get... <clears throat> well, it's Mark 5 and 25. But do you know before Jesus got to the woman with the issue of blood or, or before the woman with the issue of blood got to Jesus, don't you know Jesus was on his way to a man named Jairus' uh, house because his daughter was dead. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. Here he is, got Jesus, the great physician. He's taking the great physician to his house, and all of a sudden, Jesus is stopped. God, my, I told you, my daughter is dead. I need to get you to my house. Jesus is stopped. And Jesus stops and says, somebody didn't touch me. Mm -hmm. He said, all these people around you? Mm -hmm. Of course, you in the press. They bumping into you. Yes, yeah, somebody. He said, no, no, no. 
Somebody touched me different. Faith. Yeah. This woman with the issue of blood, she showed her faith. She had sea faith, y'all. Mm -hmm. She showed her faith because she wasn't even supposed to show her face. Mm -hmm. yeah. God Almighty. She wasn't even supposed to show her face, but she showed her faith by pressing her way through a crowd. You know she had to have her head down. You know, she wanted to make sure nobody didn't recognize her. But she said, the Bible says she said within herself. You ever talk to yourself? Oh, yes. 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 She said within herself, if I can touch him, I'll be made holy. Yes. And if you read the story, we know she went to a whole bunch of doctors. Many of us, we go to a whole bunch of places trying to get what only God can give us. Amen. Only God can give us. But when she got to him, her faith became alive. Her faith became active. Her faith was, the vitality of her faith came alive. You were able to see it. Jesus said, no, somebody just touched me. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. She, she pulled down heaven, y'all. She, when she touched him, Jesus said, now what is going on? Somebody has touched me. She suffered many things, you know, in verse 25. Went to many positions. Mm -hmm. Spent all she had. Never got any better. Instead of getting better, she got worse. Mm -hmm. But when she heard, the first level of our spiritual maturity is our ability to yeah. hear from God. The Bible says in verse 27, and when she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind him and touched him. She heard of Jesus. and She said, if I may touch him, he just is clothed. She, some people be trying to get in your face. See, some people, if I could just get a hold to his hand, she said, no, but if I could just touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway, the Bible says in verse 29, that her fountain dried up and she felt her body and she was healed of the plague. And Jesus, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, he knew he had just healed somebody. Mm -hmm. He said, who touched me? <laughs> Good God Almighty. Man, you have, this, when you have the faith, when you have sea faith, your faith can touch Christ. Mm -hmm. Your faith can touch him. This is what he's looking for. He's looking for this type of faith that will touch him. And the disciples say, seeing the multitude, they thrown in you. Everybody bumping into you. You say, who touched me? The disciples say, Jesus, what you talking about who touched me? Her faith showed up. And not only did her faith show up, Jairus' faith showed up. Look at Jesus. He's multitasking, y'all. Mm -hmm. He's on his way to Jairus' house. Right. Many, many people miss this in the text. He stops when she touches him, but he still has to go to Jairus' house. <laughs> now, here's Jairus' faith. This is how his faith becomes see, faith. He could have just said, oh, forget it. She's dead. Mm -hmm. Because if you continue to read, I, 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 I'll let you read it in your own time. But as him and Jesus, now he finally gets Jesus to continue to move mm -hmm. with him. Somebody meets him. You always get some naysayers, y'all. Right. They're always running up in your face. Somebody meet him and Jesus. On the way, ain't no least you taking him to the house. No. We just left the house. She dead. What they told him? He yep. ran into an mm -hmm. obstacle, y'all. Yep. He could have just said, oh, I'm sorry, Jesus. You heard what they said. Jesus said, no, let's go. <laughs> and you read the story for yourself when you fit. And Jesus gets there and, and raises her up because of his faith. I want to give you another one. I know it's, our time is well spent. But let's go to Daniel 6 and 10. I got to give you this. Daniel. Daniel had sea faith. You know they made a decree. No more praying. My God, they trying to do that now. <laughs> Glory to God. Daniel, I'm reading it out of my easy read Bible. Daniel, the sixth chapter, the tenth verse. It, the, Daniel always prayed to God three times a day. Three times every day, he bowed on his knees and prayed and praised God. Mm -hmm. Even though, this is where sea faith came in. This is where sea faith came in. Even though Daniel heard about the new law. They passed a new law. He still went into his house to pray. He went up to the upper room of his house, opened the windows, faced toward Jerusalem, and then Daniel bowed down on his knees, prayed just as he always had done. See, when the law came out, the law was an obstacle that could have kept Daniel's faith yeah. mm -hmm. stagnant. That could have handcuffed Daniel's faith. But the Bible says, this is the easy read Bible, it says, even though he heard about that law, it didn't stop him from praying. Mm -hmm. There's many people today, because we got some laws and different things going on, we got, we're living in a pandemic, as, as if you would, right now, people, people's faith has went down a level, mm -hmm. or two, or three. 
because I can't go to church because you know the pandemic going on. I just saw you at the store. I, I got to go there. I got to eat. Well, you need spiritual food you as well. Yeah, yeah. You need spiritual food as well. Some people's faith has dropped down. It says, Daniel, even though he heard about the new law, he still went in his house and prayed. Glory to God. I was in the military one time, and our time is about up. They told me we was at a certain event. They said, you know you can't pray in here. They knew I liked to pray. I was like, Daniel. They knew it was, it was their food. I said, oh, yeah, I'm praying. They said, oh, you know you can't pray in here. I said, man, I've been praying since I walked in the door. See, some things you cannot let, because you got faith in God, you can't let what people say stop your faith in him. Amen. God always gives us an opportunity. As we get ready to close the night, if you would in your own time, we're talking about faith for the rest of this month. Every Tuesday, every Tuesday, we're going to talk about faith. But we have a cloud of witnesses. Mm-hmm. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, talks about a great cloud of witnesses. Yeah, yeah. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, where it started out and said, now faith is, we call that the hall of faith. Mm-hmm. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, that's the hall of faith. Why is it, why you call it the hall of faith? It's like the hall of fame. When you read Hebrews, the 11th chapter, you'll pick up on all those people in there that showed their faith. Okay. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, you read it in your own time. It, it, it start, after it tells you about now faith is, then it starts talking about how they showed their faith. Mm-hmm. It, it shows you. It says, uh, it, go down to verse 4, it says, Now Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Why? He showed his faith. By which he obtained the witness that he was righteous. Yes. Mm-hmm. You go down to verse 5, it's in that Enoch was translated. Like, man, don't you translate? You know what that means? He didn't die like everybody else. He was translated. He didn't see death because he was found to cause he, God translated him before his transition. He had this testimony. He pleased God. Oh, ah, his faith pleased God. Keep reading. You'll start. You'll see the next one. It'll say, now, faith, uh, uh, without faith is impossible to please God, but then you go to verse 7. It says, Noah showed his faith. You go to verse 8. It says, now, Abraham showed his faith. Glory to God. If you go down to verse 11, it says, now, F- Sarah showed her faith. Yeah. You keep going, it'll jump down there and it'll tell you about this one and that one that showed their faith. faith. Joseph showed his faith. All of these, we call this the hall of faith because these are the ones that had seed faith. Yes. Yes. I want to pray with you tonight. Maybe you're dealing with something tonight. Your faith has been low. You want to exercise it. You want to get strong in your faith. We want you to have what, what we're talking about tonight. That seed faith. That faith that will speak. That yes. faith that will do. And the faith that will give. Yes. This is the type of faith that Jesus is looking for. That he can say unto you, just like he said to those boys that brought the man in on, on the stretcher. He saw their faith. Whatever you may be going through tonight, we want you to know that God is able to deliver. God is able to heal. It takes your faith, glory to God, mixed with activation to produce manifestation. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we have studied your word on tonight, Father God, I pray now, Father, that you would increase our faith, Father God. Yes, yes. Give us the faith, Father God, that will show you, Father God, that will be active in our lives, that others may be able to see us, Father God. Step out trusting and depending confidently upon you, Father. We pray now, Father, for those that are struggling in their faith, Father God, those that are dealing with sin and different trend, uh different iniquities, Father God. We pray now, Father God, that you would give them the faith to rise above, Father God, to take back what the enemy is trying to take from them, Father God, that they may be able to possess the faith that's needed to go on, Father God. Father, I pray now that as we get ready to leave this place, but not your presence, that you would bless your people everywhere, Father God. Continue to build us up, Father God, in our faith that we may grow stronger thereby. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Join us back here on Sunday for the closeout of our pastor appreciation. May God bless you and keep you. Bye bye. Amen. Amen. See faith tonight. Yes, indeed. Amen. There we go. That was a good one right there. Yeah, that was good. That's that faith you gotta have, y'all. Yes, indeed. Mother Texas, when you get home. Okay. Let, let us know you made it. All right, then. All right, y'all have a good time. Thank you, mother. You have a good week. Let's see you. You be.